and welcome to NextGen Banking London, the AI revolution. I'm Hannah Wallace and joining me now is Gail Shepard from Saffron's AI group for Intel Corporation. And we're going to be talking about leveraging AI in financial services. Gail, it's great to have the chance to speak with you today. Thank you. Good afternoon. Building on your keynote, how do you think financial services uh, entering their journey of digital transformation can make sense of the various flavors of AI? That's a wonderful question, and I'm going to try to reduce it to something very simple because uh, I think there is a, a certain amount of complexity associated with AI, many flavors of AI, uh, and, and we're, we'll focus down first on what we think of as enterprise or B2B AI technologies and specifically for financial services. So uh, Saffron uh, is a, uh, an organization within Intel that focuses on designing and developing and delivering to customers uh, decision support systems that are, that are native AI uh, uh, based. And so, um, so when we talk to our customers about when you would apply our form of technology, which is essentially an associative learning and reasoning system, we really look at the problem and um, the data that they have that to work with. And, and also the nature of the dynamics or the, the, what we might think of the complexity of the, of the operations of that data. So if you're in a very stable world where things don't change very much, uh, then a traditional statistical machine learning or a deep learning approach to AI might be the first the first line of defense, if you will, to selection of the algorithms and the methodologies that you use to solve that particular problem. And why is that so? It's because if the world's not changing very much, you can use models and rules um, to define the, the, the approach. Uh, you, you, if you have a lot of data and you, and you have many examples of, of what you're trying to define, then it works also for statistical machine learning or deep learning. The problems are um, known and fixed in nature, and we think of these problems as being somewhat um, perhaps regulatory. Uh, in their nature, and that they have to have predefined rules and their uh, 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 approaches that the, the, the financial institution has to use in order to comply with the regulators. Uh, there could also be uh, situations that are perceptual computing, where we're trying to extract images, uh, and those images are stable, right? So we're extracting an image from uh, a photograph or an image from a document. And so these are natural things for a, a a deep learning or, mach or um, a machine learning approach to take. When we move into a, a, a more complex, dynamic world where things are changing rapidly, then there's, there are other approaches you can use. And often we think of them as associative learning and reasoning systems, which is one of the things that Saffron does. And, and the, the example there uh, would be that the data is changing frequently. Um, one, one instance of an, an example can be very valuable. And we're talking about things like financial crimes uh, as, as one example of the first time a, a, an example of fraud or money laundering occurs and we've identified it as such. We want to be able to now use that one example across any, any future events to make sure we've detected it immediately as opposed to waiting for 5,000 of those to arrive before we start detecting it. That would be a really uh, obvious example. And so in these environments, um, we don't know what we don't know. Uh, anything can matter, and so the, the information gathering is, is as important as the learning around the information. So all information then becomes interesting and valuable to us, potentially. Uh, the learning is more about connections and associations, uh, organizing a knowledge around those uh, associations, uh, really putting together a semantic and a statistical orientation to that, and then being able to uh, sh uh, uh, answer questions on the fly in real time as well as to do what we might think of as more predictive or prescriptive analytics. So thinking about stable worlds, dynamic, always changing worlds, these are the first two, are the lens I would put on the, the type of and methodology we would use to solving the problem. Problem, and then it goes on from there. And finally, Gail, what would you say uh, the future looks like in this space? Well, I think the next five years are really interesting. And again, we're going to focus this in on the enterprise because uh, on the consumer side, we're, we're, seeing, we're always seeing dramatic changes in self-driving vehicles, uh, drones delivering packages and personalizing the delivery mechanisms and, and things of this sort. So the future is very, very exciting across the board. But for, for financial institutions in particular, uh, who have massive amounts of data uh, that's, that's uh, somewhat organized in, in functional areas or silos. Um, the, first, the first thing up, I think, is the, the beginning of 
data organization such that we are sharing and collaborating with data across these business silos. And I think the, the, the driver for that is probably going to be customer centricity really coming to bear. We talk about it, it's always it's on people's minds that rather than a transaction centric financial institution, we become a customer centric uh, organization, uh, but I, but it's been difficult to do that when data is is difficult to unify across these different silos. So that will be one of the important transitions that occurs that enables some of the change yet ahead. Uh, a second thing is um, uh, we have to begin uh, creating systems that are explainable uh, and have have um, transparency. And so we're going to see over the next five years, and we do this today at Saffron, but we're going to see over the next five years that more and more of the systems being developed have the ability to understand how the algorithm came to its conclusion, its recommendation, and the data behind that. And that becomes important for ethics and bias and ultimately uh, establishing trust in these systems. Once we have trust in systems, then we move into what I think of as a much more human-machine collaboration ahead. Human-machine collaboration is different than human-machine interaction. Today, we're very much uh, if you want to think about uh, what we're doing with AI and enterprise systems, the human is to a large degree directing the technology to do something on its behalf. Identify anomalies for me. And in some cases, those anomalies are predefined as to what they look like. And in some cases, uh, in an unsupervised environment, those anomalies are not understood or known, and they are, they are being surfaced up as a potential anomaly. A human is in the loop, identifying whether that is indeed an anomaly or not. And then the feedback systems, the learning systems, take the human interaction and, and, and then record what the human observed about that anomaly to learn from that to improve the detection of anomalies in the future. So that's an example of human-machine interaction and more directed um, interaction. Human-machine collaboration gets very exciting. And human-machine collaboration is where uh, I, am, I may be directing uh, through a variety of techniques the, the machine to do something for me, to investigate, to analyze something for me. But at some point, the, the process that the machine is using is also learning on the fly about me, about my reactions to the information that they're finding, and creating what would be a, a personalized workflow uh, around me, the investigator in this example. And additionally, the collaborator has the opportunity to e extract from other experts who are like me things that they have also done that I may not have considered in my direction. And, and my intelligent agent, if you will, on the other side, the AI agent, can recommend to me uh, that, well, I have, I have an idea that you might want to pursue this, a hunch that you may want to take a look at this information, or look what else I found, is this interesting to you? And that begins to really expand um, the, the opportunity for uh, AI to really work on behalf of us, right? Today, we're, we're kind of telling it what to do, and the future is going to share its, its insights that it finds based on what it's learned from us and, and help us in, continue to improve our decision making. If you consider the massive amounts of data available, the uh, experience in that data and our ability to exploit the experience in that data for business to make better decisions. It's, it's really significant and exciting to be part of creating that future. So in the next five years, we'll get that done. Uh, and then there's a whole lot more ahead, I think. Gail, this has been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure to be here. And thank you for watching.